And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I am Todd Tremonti, and we are talking all things DFW real estate. We have got a guest in studio today. Can't wait to get you introduced to Mayor Velker from Richardson, Texas, here in just a minute. We've been talking about Richardson for a long, long, long time. We just got educated here in the studio right before we went on the air. Now we know all the things, literally everything there is to know. Everything. I mean, you couldn't stump us right now. It would take seconds to pull one over on us at the moment. Try it, dare you? That's right. But we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Mayor Velker on in just a second. Before we do that, though, we want to let you know that we want to talk to you. We want to talk to you about your real estate. We want to take your questions, your concerns. As always, you can call in 214-310-0008, or you can head over to the website toddtremontiteam.com. Find all of our pros and access audio from previous shows. You can catch the mayor and all of us on the podcast this week, Dallas-Fort Worth Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. Find it where you find all your podcast info. Let's get right into it really quickly. Welcome to the show, Mayor. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for being in Richardson, by the way. That's right. We love being here. We've always been here, by the way. Uh, In the earliest days, we started in Lake Highlands, and then we made it up here very, very quickly. Then we moved our family up here. Uh, a huge chunk of our team is here. We do have a Fort Worth office, but our main office is here in Richardson with the studio right here inside the office. So I'm glad it was convenient for you. we got lots to talk about, man. There's been a lot going on both in Richardson and North Texas, obviously this year and, and at all times. But we've got, we got everything from elections to a fire at the city to a, a rapidly changing uh, community and population, folks wanting to move here from all over the country and all over the world. So let me just start with a softball for you really quickly. What what do folks need to know that they don't already know about Richardson, Texas? Well, I think people probably know that Richardson is a high-tech employment center and that there's great neighborhoods and that we have beautiful parks and all sorts of schools from preschool to a PhD. But what they may not know is that we're a hot spot for real estate right now. Tell them. Talk to them. We, we, uh, you know, I grew up in a house that was built in the 60s. Um, And uh, I find that a lot of people are moving here because they love mid-century modern. Mm -hmm. And if you would have told me 15 years ago, right. we would have been one of the hottest spaces that you were trying to come buy property. <laughs> if you had told me 15 years ago that mid-century modern was going to be a thing. <laughs> I, I still cringe, but yeah. and I'm not judging. No, I hear but, you. But, you know, it's what I grew up in. Yeah. What I tell people is today's workforce wants to live in grandma and grandpa's house, yeah. not mom and dad's house. They, but, don't, they don't want the 4,000 square foot house. They want 26, 24 hundred square feet yeah. they want tree-lined streets they want to be able to walk well, down to a park they, they like the look and and these houses have been redone right so they have all the modern things yeah. that you need in the house but they're smaller so they're more efficient they yeah. got great character it's fu- so, it's funny that you say that we talk to people obviously moving here from all over the place and we've been in richardson for 20 years but the the california buyer for example that's everybody's kind of yeah. fear and concern they are so thrilled to get out of their boring California home because the average homeowner in California is not living in the one we're seeing on TV, right? And get here and be able to pretty affordably, in their mind, yeah. buy that 1,800 to 2,800 square foot ranch style that many of us are saying, look, our architecture here is just not all that exciting. And they're going, no, this is the this charming is- house. And by the way, you can move to some outer lying city, but it's going to take you 50 years to get that live oak and the, or the pecan tree in right. the yard order. And, and, and we've got them. We've had them for a long, long time. And to your point, the tree lined streets where the neighbor's home and the, and the, well, and a lot of the, the remodeling and rebuilding that's going on in our city is from, you know, California, Illinois, New York. Right. And oftentimes they come with cash in their, in their right. hands yeah. Yeah. because what they sold, which is yeah. not as nice as what they have now, right. um, they're putting, you know, 20, 40, 50%. Well, and a lot of times, 100 and 200%. What the heck does 200% mean? We talk about how a lot of our California buyers, and these are folks that we're working with, have sold a home. Yeah. And with just the equity portion of their California home, a lot of them are buying a home here to live in with cash. 
and then investing in a second home as a cash flow property, whether that's a rental or, or a short term. Well, I think we saw a shift during when COVID first happened. I think people really began to th- to decide and realize, like, I need more. I need more community, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to be isolated in a home. I don't want this. Like, I want to be in a neighborhood in a city with neighbors with people where we're together on a daily basis. And that's that's still happening now, which is really, I yeah. think, just really cool to see. Yeah, they want a front porch. They know that the neighbors are going to walk by. Yeah. Yeah. They want to be safe, right, but connected. Right. And uh, and we offer that. Uh, I, I He doesn't live there now, so I can say this. Uh, I had a neighbor bought a house, a couple houses down, and he came from California, paid cash for the house, right? right? And then found out who I was and then complained about his A property. big deal, by the way, is what he found out. <laughs> no, 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 no. On a pretty impressive. No, he found out that he could come and complain about property taxes <laughs> to me. Um, and I'm like, you bought your house yeah. cash, yeah. and you're complaining to me about property right. tax. Okay. I'll tell you know what you could have offered him is tell you what we'll waive those property taxes we'll hit you with some state and locals maybe some income tax you can just pay that directly to me they forget about that yeah we talk about that on this show a lot so we don't have to get all the way into that today but uh, there's a lot of folks we're we're doing that comparison math for hey yeah. you know at your income what you're used to is this and this is this property tax is shocking to you but let's look at your net net after the year by yeah. the way. With exemptions and things, I think you're going to be really, really, really happy. Well, so, and, and it's more than just what you pay. It's what you get. Right. And I would put our city services up against any in the Metroplex, but especially, I, I, I just hired in my company a, a chief technology officer that works for me, and he moved from uh, um, the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he, he's, he's still trying to figure out, is this real? Yeah. You know, because it is so different in yeah. the context of taxation, regulation, the city services, he, he you know, it's, it's a crazy little thing. Like, you pick trash up twice a week. Well, now Richardson <laughs> does, not everybody. So I'll let not I'll let everyone. I'll brag on you and and, and Richardson on this one. Uh, neighboring cities, once if you know, you know, right? Bulk trash is like the cherry on top. Oh, and man. for Richardson to do that weekly, once a week, yeah. I mean, and and whew. just on demand, just get on an app right. or call us, and we'll come pick it up. Um, and, you know, recycling once a week and, and, yeah. and trash twice. And that's just one example right. of a city service that goes in the minds of many people moving here above and beyond what they've ever say, seen before. Yeah. We're going to dig into a lot more with, with Mayor Velker. We're, we're going to get in. We're going to go beyond Richardson here in just a minute. Uh, but just so you know, uh, if you if you're thinking about Richardson, uh, it's a great thought to have. We we've been here for years. It's a wonderful place to live. If you're thinking about making a move, reach out to our team, Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. You can find us online at toddtremontiteam.com. Or if we can help you with any other part of the Metroplex, uh, we're going to get to some other areas and what mayors across North Texas are doing to both attract homeowners and also serve the serve the folks that have been there for a long long time so before we do that this first segment was brought to you by patrick glaros and his team over at cardinal financial uh, if you're looking to get a mortgage do a refinance whatever it is head over to patrickglaros.com where you can start an application right there on the website you can call him at 972-728-3420 nmls number 308-804 patrickglaros.com All right, folks, if you've got questions, you know the drill. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. Or you can find us online at toddtremonteteam.com. If you forget all of it, spell my name as best you can. Drop it in the Google box. You will find us pretty quickly. Todd Tremonti. We've got Mayor Velker with us from Richardson, Texas, but we're talking about not just Richardson, Texas. So let's back away to a full North Texas view here for a second. I know you, in many ways, are a leader of mayors. You, you've kind of run the, uh, I'm going to get the name wrong. The Metroplex here. Mayors Association. Mayors Association. I was yeah. going to say Council of Mayors. Mayors Association. So you're talking to city leaders across North right. Texas, right? What, generally speaking, what are some common thoughts, strategies, ideas, concerns, fears, whatever the, the case may be, that North Texas as a whole are dealing with right, right. now? Well, there's a balance between the economic development strategies by city around, you know, bringing businesses, right. um, both, you know, places where you can work, but also services that the city needs, and then the residential community. Right. And in the residential community, there's a balancing act that's going on between single-family homes 
and higher density multifamily. Mm-hmm. The um, this gets political. Yeah, and quickly, <laughs> and, and every mayor deals with this. Yeah, and every mayor has a different set of cards that were dealt yep. to them. Um, you know, we can't start fresh every time we uh, every time we get elected, and so you have to look at you know. How, where am I? Am I a Dallas or am I a Lucas? Right. right. Um, what's my value proposition? And then how can I leverage the regional resources that are available? So I love where Richardson is. It's, it's about access. You can, 15 minutes, you can be in downtown Dallas, right? right. Um, you can take the train, you can take cars, you can, you know, you can have your job in Plano or Frisco and still live in Richardson or in Dallas. And so all the mayors are trying to figure out what's their, what's their economic development strategy? How are they attracting businesses? How do they create a uh, sustainable residential community environment? Um, what's their transportation strategies? Right. How, do you, how do you get to work? Right. You know, how do you use the different types of mo- multimodal? Everything from walking to bikes, yeah. the trail systems, all those things. All of us get together and talk about it sounds simple, but how do I connect the Plano and Dallas trails to Richardson? I'll jump in and say it doesn't sound simple to me. I, I don't envy your the no. job that that you all have. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. And again, without without over focusing on Richardson, because there's every, everything you're saying. I'm ping 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 thinking of all these things that Richardson has done or doing to attract. But you know, let, let's just address one of the things that our listeners and our YouTube viewers and our podcast listeners are all literally asking us on a daily, if not weekly basis, you know, and that is this influx of California, Illinois, right. New York, and by the way, many, many other places oh, as yeah. well. But those are statistically where the folks are coming from. And yes, they are blown away by parks and trails and recreation and city services and police and fire and trash and water and all these things that are just simply done well, really in many North Texas cities. True. You know, Richardson is, is a leader in many ways, but there are many other cities. And I'm, I'm almost certain that you don't want to speak for any other city leaders. But before we went on air, we were talking a little bit about some of the kind of the spectrum of a city that really does want to remain a neighborhood city right. versus a city that wants to win every single economic development corporate headquarters battle. And and so in North Texas, homeowners have and businesses have so much to choose from, right. which creates an unbelievably competitive environment city to city. But here's my question, and I and I this is not random. <laughs> when when I, as a, as a community, as a, as a resident, think about the leadership that impacts my life, right. many, 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 many times, I believe people are overemphasizing national state leadership and really underestimating local leadership. You want to speak to that in, in some yeah, specific way? One of the things that we do in the Metroplex Mayors Association is we, we get together. I jokingly say it's therapy sessions, but one of the big topics we always come to is the, is the aspect of local control. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's, you know, th- there's a pecking order in uh, rule of law. I, I have to follow the, the rules and the laws of a county. And in, in our case, in Richardson, two counties, Dallas and Collin County. I have to follow the laws of the state of Texas. And, of course, I have to follow the laws in the Constitution of the United States. So every mayor knows that that they have to follow laws. But at the local, hyper-local level, a mayor and city council, and in some degree school districts, have more control and influence over your life than any of those other bodies of government. Yet, we prob- we're having an election coming up in, on May 6th, um, both a bond and a city council election. There are elections going on for school districts too. Let me jump in one second and say this is one of the great times you can get some really great information out of someone who's not up for re-election. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I am not. I've, <laughs> I've chosen not to run for what would be my last term. I've been the mayor for eight years and on city council two years before that. But but the influence we have over your life is significant. And 
far too many people think I, I, I will tell people I have more influence over your life than the president of the United States. I'm glad you said that. Cause I was going to try to draw that out of yeah. you. And that's the, obviously that's the extreme example of the, the, in theory, the most powerful political position in, in the world or in our right. country is the president. And, and more people vote for that yeah. than other things. But to just to slow down for a second and acknowledge that the mayor city council, depending on your city structure, but, but those people, in meetings that are often poorly attended, in votes that are often very poorly, uh, turnouts very low, yeah. making really re significant levers. I mean, significant decisions that are going to sway your children's education, your commute, where you shop, where you go to church, where you eat, how safe you are, when the trash is picked up, right. and, 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 and more, more important things in those, but things that impact you on a da daily, if not hourly yeah. basis. Generally speaking, what, what type of percentage do we yeah. get of people that actually vote in the local election? So don't hold me to the exact number, sure. but we're almost 125,000 people. Um, we're a little over maybe 85,000 registered voters. So these mm -hmm. are people that took the time to register to vote. Yep. Um, in our upcoming election, you know, I hope it's higher than this, but it's not uncommon for four to five percent of the people that are registered to actually vote in a local election. Wow. So in a town of 125,000 people, you can get elected mayor with 3,200 votes. Yeah. I, I, watch, I look at the vote count after every election here and it just blows my mind. Like yeah. if you're. That's shockingly it's, low. It's shocking. It's dangerously low as well. Yeah. I would say. Now. We'll stay out of the local politics. I, I was going to yeah, make no, a comment no. just on how what it what you could do to get elected if if you wanted to, um, with it with with a very 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 small yeah. loyal following. You know? Well, and 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 I'll I'll get into it a little bit. Um, two things that the mayors really focus on. And I'm talking at the regional level and state level, quite candidly, is we want to have more. We don't want control taking away away from us by especially the state. Um, I don't take a lot of money. I don't take any housing money from the federal government um, because I don't want their control right. on our city. And it's similar with the state. And a lot of people that move here from California or New York, Illinois, find it shocking that the state of Texas does not give cities any money. Mm -hmm. In those other states, there is an allocation of funds to cities. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't take money from the state. Thus, my argument, why should they tell me what to do? Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so we struggle with that local control. We also are struggling heavily right now, and this is to your point of something that could happen, is the party system, Republicans and Democrats, are now becoming more interested in local elections, both at the city council level and at the school district level. And that influence, quite candidly, I believe, could be very negative. We're, we, we, pr I proudly am not a Republican or Democrat in the context of I'm the mayor of the city of Richardson. But we're seeing outside influences from those parties more and more. What will probably happen is the vote count will go up, mm -hmm. um, but it may be one-sided. And yeah. so we'll see what the results of that are over the next few cycles. I am not going to ask you a question about this, but I feel the need to throw this out there that my personal opinion, not, not, not uh, partisan at all, is this politics are going to get more and more and more convoluted. Even if you look at silliness like artificial intelligence, and I, I don't mean that that technology is silly, but the use of you, it. You do know that I'm a CEO yes, of an AI yeah, company. And that, so. but, 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 that, but that's why I'm. I'd prefer you not consider my business silly, no, but no, that's okay. What, that's what I was just saying. That's what I was just saying. AI is not silly at all, but the way some people are using it yeah. that could skew in an election where 3,000 votes can, can garner control, uh, you know, bad information, false information, misleading right. information wi within, I mean, minutes yes. can, can turn a city. And to me, that's where I go, man, th we're headed down a path where if you are not actively involved, if you're not aware, if you're not casting a vote, if you're not part of the process, you know, people will always continue to complain and be frustrated, but to, to be able to seek out and be active enough to know that that is what someone says, that is what someone believes, that is what someone wants to do, I think is getting harder. Yeah. And so participation, to your point, the participation may go up because of funding or party affiliation, whereas my wish, the prayer would be that it goes up because people are genuinely informed yeah. uh, and know what could lead to what. And the other aspect of local elections that disappoints me um, and, and I can say this, and it may not sound right, given that I'm not running, but I do worry that there's not enough people that are stepping up. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I need people to, when you, when you come to a city, look at ways to volunteer. Look at boards and commissions you might want to be a part of. Mm-hmm. You can sit on our plan commission and influence things in unbelievable ways about neighborhoods and construction and you know density issues and transportation. All of those things happen at the local level in, a, in, a, in an organization that feeds us as a city council. And so if you could get involved in our parks and rec commissions and boards and the plan commission boards, do so. And then you'll have kind of that inside look as to how does a local government work? Right. And those are the types of candidates that I'd love to see come and run for city council. Um, but sadly, we, we don't have that many people that even want to run and uh, let alone people that want to vote. So please engage, uh, educate, understand, because truly the decisions that are made at a council or school board level, they really impact your life. I'm going to wrap up our segment with a not very funny story of for, for, you, <clears throat> for years now, people ask me during election cycles in the Richardson area what I'm running for. And the answer is nothing, never have, have no plans to. But we do a big get out the vote campaign every election cycle. We put out a bunch of signs and they say, vote your choice, but vote. And then we do a little sponsored by the Tatra Money Home Selling Team. Right. And that's why people are seeing a vote sign with my name on it. And they're going, what are you running for? And I'm like, please do not vote for me. <laughs> but we abs- the last thing you said, let me just echo it before we wrap up this segment. And we'll be back with a, some more information on what's going on in the North Texas real estate market, what buyers need to be aware of, what sellers need to be doing very carefully right now to take full advantage of the market. And we've got a bunch of exciting, fun stuff coming up in the second part of the show as well. But listen to Mayor Velker. When you... Think about what you like and dislike about your city. You can influence that. And what the man is telling you is almost nobody else is even trying to get involved. So if you want to get involved, there's a very high likelihood you can get on that board or commission or maybe even get voted into office. And please do not do that if you don't have the best of intentions for your city as a whole beyond your selfish wants and desires. But uh, we need that at the city level, of course, regional, state, and uh, it would be nice to see it at the national level. But let's start yeah. Let's start local, and I'm sure you're speaking for all local areas, yeah. especially Richardson. Any final, quick, short, concise thoughts just that you think well, folks need to know? Well, to that point, wherever you live in the Metroplex area or in the state of Texas, um, the form of government we have is really simple. It's a city, a mayor with city council that acts kind of like a board of directors. Mm -hmm. Think of me as the mayor, as the chairman of the board. We hire extremely professional city staff Mm -hmm. and they're the the city managers like the CEO. They're the ones that execute, but the council sets the mission, vision, the goals and works with the staff for the strategies. They execute those strategies. So it's important that residents and other key stakeholders, businesses, institutions like education, healthcare, financial services, get heard as to what they want to see that vision of a city be so that downstream when the city staff is implementing tactics that get, uh, get those services to you, yeah. that it's exactly what the residents and stakeholders of the city wanted. And that doesn't happen if people don't get involved. They have to be involved. Get involved in your local areas. Uh, Thank you so much for your time, Mary Velker. Hey, if you've got questions about buying or selling in Richardson or any other areas, reach out to us. If you'd like to get in contact with any of the pros we talk to here on the show, head over, as my son says, ToddTremontyTeam.com. To ToddTremontyTeam.com. We'll be right back after this with a lot more specific information on what's happening on the ground right now in North Texas real estate. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Party people. Mayor Velker is gone. Gave us what he had to give. Had a great time during the break. And now he's off to finish well at the city of Richardson. Hey, if you've got questions about residential real estate here in North Texas, let us know. 214-310-0008 or online at touchermoneyteam.com. Or you can just Google us, Touch Money. All right, here's the deal. We're here to help you. That's what we're here for. Uh, even if we're not helping you buy and sell real estate, the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team is helping people buy, sell, uh, answer questions about remodeling and vendors and property values and taxes every day, all year round. We generally hold pretty popular, uh, pretty common uh, office hours. Obviously, we work by appointment outside of that. But 
If you're looking for the best of the best, I'm pretty darn confident in the incredible and amazing people that we've been able to hire and train and work with here at the Todd Money Home Selling Team. So if you're buying or selling, if you'd like an immediate cash offer on your house, if you'd like to sell to a wonderful individual or family, uh, we can help you achieve any of those outcomes. We can help you find out what your home would sell for or rent for right now. Just go to the website, ToddTremonteTeam.com. There'll be a couple of button options for you to click. Find out what your home would sell for or rent for in under 60 seconds. Search any house by any agent and all of DFW. Also fill out some cool school cards and quizzes to see if you're ready to sell or buy or invest. All that happens online at DutchReminiTeam.com. So let's get into it. we got a lot to cover. First segment's always brought to you by Cardinal Financial and Patrick Glaros, his entire mortgage team. As good as it gets, only people I personally use for mortgage. You can find them online at patrickglaros.com and MLS number 308804. Now, Courtney, full price Courtney, classy Courtney, new tires, Courtney. I got new tires. I'm into tires now. You're, I mean, you're a car girl. That's I mean, just all there is to say about it. Once you feel like once you are given the empowerment and taught like to shop for them, your life has changed. I know most of you listening are like, not my problem. But as a woman, I, it's not something I've tended to terribly in my life. But now you know. And, and once watch you know, me go. It's like scripture. You've hidden it in your heart. No one can take it from you. No one. I'm proud of you, Courtney. I'm just picking up skills all along the way. Listen, Todd. Yes. You know, we've got these new radio segments. We do have some segments. And uh, them. I'm loving the big butts segment. Oh boy. Just to, just to let a little suspense hang in the air, the big butt segment. What's it all about? The big butt. Okay. What is it about, Todd? Well, there's a lot of things in the world of real estate, Courtney, that are not true. Headlines, misleading statistics. And we often say here in our office at the Todd Money Home Selling Team and on the show here at Dallas Fort Worth Real Estate, we'll say, yeah, but... And that's the big but. It's like, yeah, that's what everybody's saying, but here's what's actually going on. And right now in the market, everyone is saying interest rates are high. And what are we saying? But, but it's a great time to buy a house. The interest rates are like the distraction that are keeping a lot of buyers out of the market. But because some of those buyers are being kept out of the market, sellers are more negotiable. Sellers are less optimistic. Sellers are a little bit more flexible with price, a little bit more flexible with repairs, a little bit more flexible with inspection requests, with timetables. Therefore, our buyers are winning big in this market because of interest rates. Now, are they really excited that they're paying 6% instead of 3%? No, they're not. But are they aware, because they've taken the time to be educated and we've sat down and had a strategy session with them, that they probably won't have to keep a 6% interest rate for more than another couple of years. And they might be back down to five or maybe even four and a half, 4.75, maybe even lower than that. And then have been really, really glad they bought a home. Even while home values are going up in most parts of the Metroplex, they're going up a lot slower than they were when rates are down. So that's the big, but right now rates are up, but that's actually creating a lot of buyer opportunity. Now, let me add on to that, that, um, when, if, and, or when rates settle back down a little bit, buyers will have been really, really glad that they bought in a flatter, slower appreciation market. If they're able to get down, say, uh, five and a half percent or lower back into what historically we would call very, very low interest rates. Now they can refinance, bring that payment down lower. They were able to buy in a less competitive time. But here's the thing. A lot of people are saying, no, 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 no. The headlines are right. I'm going to wait until rates come back down. Well, I know you're not a full-time real estate professional, Courtney, but you're around a lot of us a lot of the time. What do you think happens to prices when rates go way down? They go up. You are correct. Because maybe you passed like seventh grade economics, right? When the cost of things go down. And we're, by the way, the cost is on the money, on the borrowing of the money. When that goes down, people can and will spend more on houses. Therefore, mm. competition drives more offers, offers drives higher prices. People can afford a higher monthly payment, so they'll borrow more, so they'll pay more. 
So if someone is saying, I'm going to wait for rates to come back down, they're also basically saying, I'm going to wait for prices to come back up. So all of that speaks to the big but for today, which is rates are up, but that's creating a good buying opportunity. Make sense? Yes. And it just seems like like everything's just going to continue to get more expensive, which is, which is what you're saying. And so it's like, what what are we waiting for? So to your point, people think they're waiting for the Federal Reserve to get inflation under control, which, by the way, <sighs> technically speaking, inflation is slowing, but it's still running rampant compared to what we're used to for the last decade plus. So while you're waiting... Your dollar's worth less and less and less, and the house is worth more and more and more, right? So as everything gets more expensive, that's what continues to happen while you're waiting, as opposed to f buying a hard asset, which is useful, that historically goes up in value over time. It's not guaranteed, and there's no short-term guarantee, but over the long haul, it's always gone up. And then if you, if you own that asset and inflation keeps going, guess what happens to the value of the asset? It goes up with the inflation. So all of these things point towards waiting is not a great idea. Now, some people should wait. If you and your family and your finances are not ready to buy a home, you shouldn't let what I'm saying entice you into a poor decision. But if you're ready to buy and you can buy and you want to buy, I don't think waiting is a great idea. I think waiting is very, very expensive. So that's the big but segment for today. I hope that was helpful. You know what else would be helpful, Courtney? Landscaping. Oh, she saw what I was holding in my hand. What's helpful is during the springtime getting your landscaping in order instead of waiting until the summertime when it's 112 degrees outside and you want pretty things in your yard and you put them in your yard and then they die because not enough there's not enough water on the planet to uh, keep new plants and shrubs and flowers and trees alive in Texas in August. There are some rare exceptions, but not very many. So get that stuff handled now. Reach out to Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E, KeenLandscaping.com. Ask for Ben. Tell him Todd Tremonti sent you. Now, we got a lot on the agenda today, but I want to pause really quickly and remind people, you are listening to DFW Real Estate. That is Dallas-Fort Worth Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. If you didn't catch the whole show, if you missed Mayor Velker, if you missed any other parts of any other shows, check out the podcast. Where can they find the podcast, Courtney? Anywhere you listen to podcasts. Apple, Spotify. Spotify. Stitcher. Stitcher. Go looking for the podcast, Dallas Fort Worth Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. It's actually Dallas Fort Worth Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti. Every week you're going to get most of, if not all of, the radio show content. So you can go watch it on demand there as well as some bonus content. Maybe we get into some artificial intelligence conversation with Mayor Velker because that's what he does professionally. Maybe we get into some very specific information about maybe, say, Anna, Texas. Maybe there's some other questions you have that we can't get to on the radio show or questions that come up in the middle of the week, day to day on the at just, you know, brokerage business at the Tatramani Home Selling Team. And we'll drop you some nuggets over there on the podcast, maybe some interesting interviews. You never know what you're going to find. Check it out. Any place you check out podcast, do all the things you're supposed to do with podcasts, subscribe, download, like, share it with your friends, all that stuff. Dallas Fort Worth Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti. Final thoughts? Well, you were just um, talking about how you're buying an asset will always go up. And then my question for you is- Not always. Does but... real estate always win in the long term? Well, let me be clear. No, it, it, everyone has a different timetable. But if you're saying over the 50 year period, is real estate the best investment on the planet? No, I mean, some people buy a penny stock and it goes up a thousand percent, but those are rare, right? See, well, let's just have it out right here on the air, Courtney. She whispered a thousand percent and kind of na 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 na, -na because I tell her oftentimes that a thousand percent in the way that she's using it is not accurate. So let's just do this in front of all the people. I just, okay? I like to say that things what? are a thousand percent. And now, he yells at me all I, the time. Oh, have I ever yelled at you, you once? You yell at have me. Have I ever raised my voice? You tell God, the people. This is what my mother used to say Never to me. not once have I, have I yelled, not at, yelled you. at you. I haven't even raised my voice at you. I've just said, hey, that's not how that works. I find that life's not interesting unless you're exaggerating it. Have you learned this about I've me? I've learned that about <laughs> you, yeah. Look, some would say they've learned that about me. Here's the thing. Let me be clear. You can have a thousand percent return on investment. So if I invest a penny, I can get a thousand of those back, but I cannot give you a thousand percent effort. Does that make sense? Yes. I can give you 100% of what I have to give you. Now, depending on how you're saying that, like I give you a hundred percent of my effort coach, 
That's all I have to give. That's literally, that means all of, that all I have. Of it. Now, I can't give you a thousand percent effort. Now, I could give you, if I scored one point yesterday and I scored a thousand points today, I gave you a thousand percent improvement. Does that make sense? Okay. That's a measurement of a metric. Okay. But I can only give you a hundred percent of me, of my time, of my energy, of my effort. Um, did you do the job? I did a hundred percent of the job. Only all of the job can be done. Now, in 2023, we had a thousand percent improvement over 2022. The job produced a thousand percent more results. You got me? Yes. Okay. So what I just said okay. was you can get a thousand percent return on a penny stock. And back to the question that was asked, that could outperform real estate for sure. That one rare, very, very rare and unbelievably unique return on investment. But if you're asking me, what do most people do to invest? And what are the most, what, what, what returns do most people get over the long haul? Residential real estate is going to be up there as good, if not better than almost anything. I say almost because there are exceptions. If you bought Apple stock at the right time, almost nothing could touch it. If you bought Amazon stock at the right time, if you bought a piece of land that everybody thought was, here's a great example. Um, um, George Mitchell bought the woodlands when it was swamp land. It was like nasty, useless marshland. And most people that are listening know who, what the woodlands is. Master plan community, Northwest Houston, um, was one of the very first and the most successful master plan community in the world, well, in America, year to date. Like until it, until the point it was created, he built Lake Woodlands. He built a lake. He gathered. He literally engineered. He and had people do this. Engineer the water so that. It was now an attraction, lakes and channels, and the land was reclaimed. And now it is one of, if not the most successful master plan residential community on the planet to this day. It's a beautiful place to live that's really, really well planned and really, really well run. And the only thing people complain about is that it has high taxes. But based on what Mayor Velker said in the first part, you got to factor in what you get for those taxes. You get one of the safest, prettiest, best schools, sports, attraction, parks and recreation, all the things you could ever want in a community. And it's done there very, 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 very well. So that all started with a guy that bought cheap land that nobody wanted. And everyone said, you're crazy for buying it. It's never going to amount to anything. Great. You know, concert venues, malls, shopping. I mean, it's, it's a wild. wild success. So do you call that a real estate investment? He bought a ton of land. Now it's a bunch of neighborhoods and developments. Yeah, the invest, the return on that's incredible. But is that normal? No. If we're talking about normal investments, I throw my money in a mutual fund or I buy real estate, I'd rather have the real estate. And the reason is the mutual fund might do really well, but I don't get to live in the mutual fund and enjoy the mutual fund and protect my family and go and rest there and that be my safe place and that you know build memories and all those things there. And it might generate the same or even better financial return also. I can enjoy it because it's a real asset. It's physical. I can generate cash flow off of it and it can have a capital gain, meaning it's worth more later than what I bought it for. None of those things are guaranteed but it has multiple returns, a lifestyle return, a cash flow return, maybe, and a capital gains return, maybe. And over the long time, lifetime of most people, that's gonna be one of the best investments they can make. That's as close as I can get to an absolute definitive better or worse answer because life's more complicated than that. Is that fair? It's fair. It's fair enough. All right, you know what else is pretty fair? the kind and wonderful people over at PMR Roofing, and that's a silly radio uh, transition, but really, fair is not a word you think of a lot of times with roofers. It's like, you know, a necessary evil or shady people trying to sell you stuff after a hailstorm. Uh, if you tuned into the show last week, we had Jordan Collins, vice president over at PMR Roofing, on the show with us. Call him when you have roofing issues, 469-409-ROOF or online at pmrroofing.com. They're just not going to sell you something that you don't need. And when you do need something, they're going to do it the right way at a fair price. Look you in the eye, shake your hand, and do the right thing. pmrroofing.com. I know you're a big fan of our segments. So what would you like to do next? Well, I love our segments. And, you know, we are growing our team. We are. Todd. And um, we're looking for world-class people. That's true. I mean, we have an incredible team and crazy uh, and incredible. At the a same crazy time. and incredible team. At the same time. And so uh we are working through your book. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your book. 
Um, I think this is the second one, maybe the third one. It's called Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and the Truth That Can Make You Wealthy. And I'm checking because I literally don't remember what year we published this one. Um, I think it was seven or eight years ago. But anyway, um, we've been going through the different five lies, the different lies in the five lies. The third lie is this is a great part-time career. Doesn't that sound popular though? That's something people say. Oh about my real- gosh. I would have a hundred percent thought be a stay at home mom and be a real estate agent. Yep. Now let me ask you a quick question. How many stay at home mom? And I, you know me, my, my wife under the technical definition, here's a stay at home mom. We think that's the best thing for our family. I love, I think it's the hardest job in the world. It's the most fruitful job in the world with eternal implications. Trust me, I there is not a single ounce of me that doesn't love what single what, what, what stay at home moms, stay at home dads, whatever do. Okay, but how many people do you know that are powerhouse attorneys that are stay at home moms? Zero point zero. How many do you, how many world class doctors, physicians, surgeons that are stay at home moms? Just can't do it. What about uh, like powerhouse uh, financial people, accountants, auditors, it's financial not, advisors? It's not happening. No one would think right. people that do a job that that's impactful and technical and specific and labor intensive, you know, we're not talking about swinging a sledgehammer labor. We're talking about hours and focus and energy on the job. No one would think you would do that part time. But in the world of real estate, it's very, very common. Now, I know there are people listening to me right now that I just made very, very angry. Because your question is, how am I supposed to do it full-time if I don't start part-time? This is my situation. You don't understand me. You know, your wife gets to stay at home, blah, 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 blah. I love you. I believe in you. I care for you. But there is a better way for you to transition into real estate. And the reason for that, and I will not apologize for this, is that the consumer deserves full-time focus. Now, I'm not going to say that you can't successfully transact real estate part-time. What I'm going to say is you can't do it at a world-class level over and over and over repeatedly with consistent, predictable results without killing yourself or without making sacrifices that I don't want you to have to make. So what we do here on the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team and what we coach and consult with agents and brokers and teams all over the United States and Canada to do is to build a better business model so that people don't have to do that, so that they can get ready to join the brokerage, join the team, make a fully committed full transition and have a financial model that they don't have to go six months without income or go figure it out on their own or only work their personal sphere, which we talked about last week. So all of that is wrapped up in the lie that this is a great part-time career. It can be done that way, but not at a world-class level. And we are only interested in residential real estate if it's being done at a world-class level. That doesn't mean perfect. People are not perfect. Businesses are not perfect. But it means caring about your client, offering world-class expertise, offering phenomenal results, because obviously people care about results most, if not close to most, and doing it in a way that people would really enjoy that. So think about a world-class attorney, a world-class accountant, a world-class doctor. These are the most educated, committed, full-time, hardworking people, but they also can lead really wonderful lives. And that is possible in a real estate career here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. If you're interested in something like that, I want you to go to toddtremontiteam.com, track down the careers page, click any button, find any phone number, call us, email us, let us know that you would like to join our team. We have a Richardson office and a Fort Worth office. We cover the whole Metroplex. Our agents specialize on the buy side or the sell side. And they're only gonna be successful here If they're competitive, fun, hardworking, fairly organized, really wonderful people that love to serve and lead and protect others. So that's what happens here. Um, Goosehead Insurance, I'm just going to say it. You've heard Ian say it a thousand times. You've heard me say it a thousand times. Insurance isn't always all that exciting. But what is exciting is getting more coverage for less money and being very, very careful to not have an insurance provider that really can only offer you one product. What DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance can do is shop 12, 13, 14, 15 different carriers, meaning different insurance providers, but he can be your insurance person every single year. Help you shop every single year. Make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. You can literally just email him, dp.lambert at goosehead.com, dp.lambert at goosehead.com. It's also important that you know what a home warranty is. 
if you ever are moving into a new home or there's some uncertainty around your home, I think it's a great idea to have a home warranty. It's kind of like insurance. It is not insurance, but it's like a little mini plan on the basic systems in your home that if for any reason something goes wrong, you just call them. They send out a vendor. You pay a little small trip fee and they take care of the rest. Go to homeserve.com. Ask for Christine Crowley. Tell them Todd Romani sent you. Homeserve.com. What have we not covered today? Cotney. Todd, you read and digest so much information each week and you're constantly telling us around the office what you are learning and what we need to be reading. I want you to tell the listeners what you are bursting at the seams to make sure that we know this week. Let me just first say that it is a gift and a plague to be like addicted to learning and wanting to consume absurd amounts of information. I am I, I have to confess right now, I'm really fighting the evening hours where like, it's the first time all day where I've got some time to kind of do whatever I want. And I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm going to three X speed some stuff and pour a ton in. And that's not a good idea. I'm, I've got to find a break at the end of the day, but I'm reading a book right now on boutique businesses. And I think Courtney's actually reading it. Oh with yes. Me. And what I'm learning, I'm learning lots of things. I'm being reminded of lots of things that some, some values I have are being affirmed, but for our friends and our listeners, what I'm learning is how valuable specialization is. We actually just talked about it with the way we're growing our team, but um, you cannot be residential, commercial, industrial, uh, sales, leasing, marketing, and all those things. What you can do is one thing really well, and that's where local businesses with a specialized approach are really what make the world go around. And when you want something done at a world-class level, when you want to have fun buying or selling or renting something, go to a local business. Go to a local business operated by an owner that's involved, that's passionate, that's exciting, that has some unique giftedness. And that business allows those people to share their gifts with the world. As a Christ follower, I think that's how it's supposed to be done. I don't think work is separate from ministry. I don't think work is separate from life. I think it's the part of the, our lives, one of the parts of our lives where we get to share our gifts with the world repeatedly and regularly in a way that blesses and encourages and serves others. And by the way, I think I just explained what local business is actually about. If we all did that, we would benefit from the gifts in the community and we could accommodate for the weaknesses in the community and we could serve each other in a really awesome and encouraging way. So that's my takeaway from what I'm reading this week is go and work with local businesses. I didn't mean to do this, but I'm just going to say it. There are real estate companies advertising all over the radio and television that are not from Dallas. They don't live in Dallas. They're not even paying attention to Dallas, really. They're just trying to generate leads in Dallas and kick those out to some agents in Dallas and hope to make a bunch of money. They're not bad people, but they're not living out what I just said, where the gifts in the community are serving others in the community and we can all get better value and enjoy our lives more by sharing our gifts with each other. I think it's awesome. I think people should go look for that. If we can help you with that at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, buying or selling or investing in real estate, just go like my son says to thatremontyteam.com. 